Welcome back to the next part of differential signaling with RS422. After the kind of forced <laughs> end of the last part, because things were just getting a little bit too long, uh, card here, link in the description, we will talk today about the importance of the sea or ground, also called signal return line. Have a look at the inner workings of an RS422 transceiver line driver and receiver and talk about grounding issues in general. Enjoy! To the issues surrounding the ground connection or signal return line, currently here that brown jumper wire, and I'm sorry, but all 30 meters of Cat 3 twisted pair cable will be gone for now. Instead, I have, yeah, that brown jumper wire and these gray and red twisted pair jumper wire for my differential signal. Let's have a look at a drawing what's actually on the bench right now. We are basically back to part one of the basics. If I haven't already carded that video, again, card here, uh, link in the description anyway. So we have here our RS422 transmitter inside an ISL8490. We have our receiver inside another ISL8490. We have here our line, no just jumper cable, no longer CAT3 cable. We have our 100 ohm termination. We have two isolated power supplies for each breadboard for both ISL 8490s, decoupled of course. And we have our signal generator here churning out the 10 megahertz signal terminated of course 50 ohm before it goes into the transmitter and please note that is connected to main earth okay please excuse the dirty waveforms here but this is really just breadboard stuff and problems here with the ground connections of my probes yeah uh, yeah it's not nice but uh i think you can see enough uh, again, input from our signal generator, then the next two traces, our differential signal as it arrives at the receiver and the digital output of the receiver. Now, what happens if I pull the ground connection? Nothing much, huh? Oh, why is that? because we still had a ground connection between the transmitter and the receiver. You remember in the drawing, it was shown that the output of the signal generator, the signal ground here, is connected to main earth. The oscilloscope, yeah, the shield here on the probes is also connected to main earth and the ground connections, shield connections from the probes go everywhere, including to the receiver. Yeah. I'm running now my oscilloscope from an isolation transformer, so it has no longer a connection to main earth. Uh, yeah, very crude thing. I built it myself, card here, link in the description. I also disconnected the probe here at the transmitter side on the input. So yeah, there's also no ground loop here going through the probes. So now what happens if I disconnect the ground? Ugh, that doesn't look good. Uh, let me try to give you a better picture. Let's go to a larger time scale to capture what's going on there. Okay, let's just stop here and have a detailed look. With the ground connection, the voltages on our A and B line were switching between 1 volt and 4 volts. And now they are varying between minus 2 volts and plus 5 volts. <laughs> yeah, measured to the ground at the receiver side. Mind you, the differential voltage between A and B line is still okay, but the common mode voltage, so the average between the two voltages, is widely varying. 
And in this case with a frequency, yeah, that pattern here of 43 kilohertz, aboutish. I don't know where that's coming from, maybe from an Arduino down there, mm, who knows. Anyway, again, reference part one, the basics. RS422 can only take so much of variations in the common mode voltage before it stops working. Our receiver seems to be just fine with these common mode voltage oscillations, but that's pure luck. To understand why that is working at all, we have to have a closer look at the inner structure of an RS422 receiver and an RS422 transmitter. Because if you think about it, I have two voltage sources here, yeah, the A and the B line, and absolutely no ground connection from here to over there where I measure these two voltages to ground and somehow it works. How? Here's our RS422 transmitter line driver and here is our RS422 receiver. I've only drawn the important parts and it's all very simplified, but it's enough to explain to you what's going on here. And they are both connected by the three lines, our A and B signal line and in blue our C ground or signal return line. Why that's called signal return will become clear in a minute. And both have their own power supplies isolated from each other, VCC1 and VCC2. The output stage of a line driver transmitter, which we are interested in here, is a simple affair. It's just two totem poles. Yeah, there are more parts here. I said it's simplified, but basically two totem poles, each consisting of two transistors. The receiver has at its heart a comparator with a little bit of Schmidt triggering inside it. We also saw that in part one, the basics. And the inputs of that comparator are held at half VCC2 by these voltage dividers. 2K for these resistors would be a, a typical value. And both lines are also connected via higher value resistors, uh, typically 10K, to the A and B signal line. So as long as nothing happens here at the A and B signal line, uh, nothing at the output should really happen. That's a forbidden state because both inputs are at exactly the same voltage. Now, what happens if we pull the A line high where this transistor, this one is off, and the B line low where that transistor, that one is off? A current starts to flow along that green line from the transmitter voltage source through the 10K resistor here in the receiver and the 2K resistor here back to ground and back to the voltage source. Due to the additional current through that resistor, the voltage at that point is increased and our comparator gets a clear input signal and sets the output high. But there is a second current path from our right voltage supply here, going up here through that resistor, that input resistor, and back to ground here through that transistor and back on the signal return ground line to the voltage source again. Creating an additional current here in that 2K resistor and those pushing that point in voltage a little bit more down. So yeah, same effect, but our comparator gets even a clearer input signal to pull its output high. And now it also became clear why our C or ground connection is also called signal return line, because the signals on our A and our B line return via that connection. 
in theory, these two currents could cancel each other out completely. If we have the same supply voltage on both sides, exactly the same and all other things are completely symmetric, then um, for example here at 5 volts VCC we have a little less than 0.5 milliamps going in both directions. But in practice you should be able to measure a current here on the signal return line. I've replaced the ground line with a ammeter and indeed we can measure a current of 0.2 milliamps here with the signal generator off. Let me switch that on. Yeah, you see everything is still working fine and it seems really to be a DC current of 0.2 milliamps. But let's try to probe that current with a scope. So my brown ground connection here is back, but now it's connected via a 1K resistor to the ground of my receiver and I'm probing across that resistor. Uh, the other side of the resistor is of course at the ground of my receiver. And the yellow trace is the current I'm measuring on that ground line. So one division is about 0.5 milliamps. And you see also that our A and B line, uh, not as extreme as with no ground connection, but now the ground connection has a resistance of 1K. So you see there, they are wobbling a wee bit. But what we really see here at <laughs> the ground current, that's wobbling quite a bit. And if we change the time scale again, we see that that 43 kilohertz signal wherever it is coming from is now happening on the ground line and no longer on the signal lines or less on the signal lines because our ground has now a 1k resistance. But what happens if we break our ground or signal return line? I mean somewhere current has to flow because somehow our receiver kept on working. Well current from our transmitter power supply can still find a way via the A line and either these two resistors here back to the B line or through these two resistors here back to the B line. And if you look at the current flows in our voltage dividers, you see we have here a negative current. So decreasing the voltage drop here, here we have a positive additional current increasing the voltage drop. So our point here, the input, positive input to our comparator is still raised up in voltage. And here we have an additional current, so more voltage drop. And here again, a negative current, so less voltage drop. So this point is still pushed down in voltage and we still get a high at our output. In addition, we put our two power supplies in series through some resistors. Following the blue lines here, so we go here through that resistor, that resistor, B line, transistor, and with the right polarity in series, the other power supply going back here through the transistor A line and again resistor, resistor and we're back at our first power supply. Note that the blue current is still going in the right direction through the resistors of our voltage dividers. So additional current here, dropping that point down, additional current here, pulling that point up. This is of course not a very desirable mode of operation. So from the point of our receiver, this whole part here without the ground connection is uh, in reference to our receiver ground here uh, dangling in the wind. And any common mode interference here introduced into the A and B lines, yeah we saw that mysterious 43 kilohertz signal, is uh, yeah waggling around the voltages here compared to that ground nilly vanilly. And that's why we need the signal return ground C line. If these common mode voltage variations go beyond what our little resistor network here and our comparator can take, then things simply stop working. 
but everything worked so nicely without an explicit C line or signal return line between our transmitter and our receiver before when we had another ground connection somehow through our oscilloscope and mains earth and so on. And uh, this is exactly what's happening here. I connected the yellow trace, the probe again here on my transmitter at the signal input and the ground. So we have now a common ground connection via the oscilloscope. Yeah, yellow trace input signal again from the function generator and everything works hunky dory. However, that mode of operation comes with a caveat. I'm measuring here 4 millivolts between the main earth of two different wall sockets. Yeah, that's the one I'm using here on my bench and that's one on a wall over there. And there is power behind it. Uh, not much, but measurable. So if we measure the current, we get 3, yeah, 3 milliamps. And this is two different wall sockets from the same sub panel, just on different breaker circuits. If you go measure that between different sub panels in uh, different apartments, uh, for example, in this house, or you measure that between the main earth connections of different houses with different grounding points, you get even greater currents and voltage differences. RS485, which is very similar in many aspects to RS422, explicitly allows to use alternative ground connections instead of a dedicated ground line between transmitters and receivers. However, I'm personally not sure if the RS422 standard actually makes the same statement or a similar statement. If you know more about that and can definitely falsify or verify that for RS422, please leave a comment. In any case, keep in mind that there might be a significant potential difference between different main earth grounding points. And we're talking RS422 here, so signal line length in excess of 1000 meters. So different buildings and different ground, literally different grounding points in the earth. And if you have an uh, electrical failure at one or the other side, there might be high currents flowing through the main earth lines and uh, exaggerating this problem even more. But there's another problem with this main earth connections. Let's say, uh, yeah, you don't like main earth as your signal return because yeah, it has a relatively high resistance and it's probably noisy as hell. So you do run an explicit C line ground line here between your transmitters and receivers. Now what you've created is a <clears throat> very big ground loop and you want to avoid that or at least you need to mitigate that and this is usually done again I'm referring to RS485 now not explicitly to RS422 by inserting here 100 ohm resistors between the earth connection and your signal ground. And this will at least mitigate that ground loop problem a little bit. That's it for today. In the next part, which will hopefully be the last, we will talk about galvanically isolating RS422 line drivers, transmitters and receivers, which will alleviate a lot of the uh, ground loop problems or grounding problems in general we talked about today. Till next time, bye.